So when we left last time, we had ta started talking about homologies as evidence for evolution. Uh, and we had talked about uh, what homologies are, that is similar characteristics resulting from common ancestor ancestry. And this is important because homologies such as similar bone structure in vertebrate animals, such as biological processes, these things are there because they were there in a common ancestor. So all birds have feathers because the bird ancestor had feathers. The opposite of homologies are synapomorphies, which are traits that are similar, but developed because of a similar environment and lifestyle, what we call a niche, and not because they were in a common ancestor. So for example, birds, bats, and insects all have wings and they use those to fly. They, are, they all developed them as a means of flying, not because some ancestor of birds, bats, and insects had wings. In fact, the ancestors didn't have wings. Uh, we also see it in things like sharks and dolphins, which both are fast swimming, ocean dwelling animals. And so they have that sort of a torpedo shape, which enables them to move very, very fast through the water. They have that shape because their lifestyle requires fast swimming, not because the environment, they're, no, sorry, not because their evolutionary ancestor had that shape. Um, they, dolphins evolved from a land vertebrate, a land mammal that had four legs. Uh, sharks are a very, part of a very ancient lineage of fish that have never had legs. So the reason that they have the same shape is because they live similar lifestyles, not because they developed from a common ancestor that had that shape, okay? So homologies, common ancestry, synapomorphies, different ancestry. So when we look at the skeleton of the modern chimpanzee and the modern human and look at Artipithecus, which is a an ancestor of humans that is pretty closely related to ancient chimpanzees, we see a lot of homologies, such as the bone structure in the arms and the legs. Um, we see a homology of the opposable big toe between Artipithecus and the modern chimpanzee. We don't see that in the modern human, okay? So we see a lot of homologies in these um, we don't see synapomorphies because these organisms have common ancestry. Forearm structure in mammals uh, is a homology. The human arm, the cat arm, the uh, whale, and the bat, they all have the same bones, the humerus, uh, the radius, and the ulna little carpal bones, and then metacarpals and phalanges making up the digits of the hand. And in the cat, we have that same structure, same bones, same organization. In the whale, same bones, same organization, but the humerus, radius, and ulna are much shortened, and the bones of the digits are much longer, and there are many, uh, many more bones in the digits. And then in the bat, we see, again, really, really long metacarpals and phalanges to hold out the edge of that wing. But we see the same bones in the same order because the common ancestor had this bone structure. So now I wanna talk about the embryological evidence for evolution. Uh, the first person who discovered this was Heinz Christian Pander who discovered germ layers in chick embryos. So what we mean by germ layers is within the very, very early embryonic development, uh, cells divide into three different layers, the endoderm, the ectoderm, and 
Hernst Christian Pen Heinz Christian Pander is the one who uh, first discovered these layers. Later scientists learned that these layers develop into the same tissue in all vertebrate animals, everything that has a vertebral column. So the ectoderm, that's this outer layer, it develops into the uh, epidermis of the skin, the central nervous system, um, and uh, some pigment cells in the skin. The mesoderm, the middle layer, develops into bone tissue and the bone of the vertebral column. Uh, some of the internal organs and some muscles. And then the endoderm develops into the digestive tube, the pharynx, and the respiratory tube. And this is the same in every single vertebrate animal. The same layers develop into the same tissues. This is evidence of common ancestry, that all of them develop in the same way. Uh, the next person who studied embryology uh, and, and contributed to our knowledge of embryology was Carl Ernst von Bayer. Uh, he studied embryos of a bunch of different vertebrates, concluded that they look pretty similar. He believed that um, they developed the characteristic of their taxa early and then their specific characteristics of their species later, which is not really very true, um, it's kind of true, but not really. He didn't believe in um, evolutionary theories. He is credited as being the father of embryology because he taught us so much about uh, embryology. Um, and then Ernst Haeckel uh, worked a little later up until 19, he lived until 1919. And he compared embryonic development in a bunch of different species. And again, he found that they're really, really similar. And he concluded that what each species does is it goes through the evolution of its species during its embryonic development. So you start out as sort of this warm thing, develop into kind of a fish thing, and then into whatever you are. He was totally wrong, um, but his, his idea held on for a very long time. Uh, he is kind of a problematic figure because uh, he faked some of his images. Uh, so because he was so uh, tied to this idea, what we say, call ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny, meaning that your development um, copies the development of your species. That he actually sort of fudged some of his data to make it look better. Um, and some people uh, use that as an argument to throw out this whole field of embryology and to throw out this all of the data from these embryos looking and developing in similar ways, which is a little bit ridiculous. You don't throw out a whole body of evidence just because one jerk handled it wrong. So when we do look at um, different organisms, we can see that um, in lots of different vertebrate animals, the same traits are uh, present in early embryos, and those early embryos do look very, very similar. So in all vertebrates, we see gill slits and a tail. Um, we also see a notochord, which is a tough cord along the dorsal side of the body, and a nerve cord, and that develops into the central nervous system. Um, so that similarity tells us again that these are all very, very similar and it suggests it's evidence of common ancestry. None of these pieces of evidence absolutely proves common ancestry by itself. But when you put them all together, then you come up with a bunch of evidence that points to common ancestry and more importantly, no evidence that points in a different direction. So this link here um, links to a site, hello, there it is, um, of different embryos. And if you just try to figure out like which one of these is human, um, I don't know, I chose wrong, just FYI. Um, this one's a zebrafish, that one's a chicken, that one's a dog. That one's a human. Oh, there we are. 
It's not pretty. Um, and there's a skink, which is kind of like a kind of a lizard. Um, so yes, the similarities of embryos does tell us something about embryonic development and it does suggest common ancestry. So natural selection, to summarize again, it selects against some individuals because of these uh, ingredients for natural selection that we've been talking about. There is natural variation in all populations. Not every individual in every population is exactly the same. They don't have the same traits. Some are taller, some are shorter, some are better at digesting lactose or something like that. There are all kinds of differences between individuals in any given population. Traits can be inherited by offspring from their parents. Not all individuals get to reproduce. If you don't reproduce at all, you are selected against in the evolutionary uh, selection process uh, because your um, your line does it stops with you. Not all individuals reproduce the same amount. Some individuals are better, much better at reproducing. Those individuals pass on more of their genes. So individuals that do reproduce pass on the traits that help them reproduce. And those traits then become more common in the next generation. That is natural selection.